there are a couple of things that you must do first before you go to the WordPress site and download the software and then set up the settings and upload it to your website. Basically, you have to create a MySQL database for your blog and you must create a user for that MySQL database. But it is actually quite a simple thing to do. If your web hosting package comes with cPanel, it's quite simple to do. Uh, simply log into your control panel and scroll down to the bit that says databases. Then click here where it says MySQL database wizard. Opens up this window and then you need to give a new name to the database. The first part of the database will be set by your hosting company. So there'll be their name or your domain name and then a dash and then you can enter your database. Let's call this Sam's blog and click on next step. Then you need to create a username and once again the username's prefix is going to be set by your hosting company. So let's call this Sam001 and then the password you can enter your own password or you can click here on password generator and it'll generate a password for you. You need to make a note of this because you'll need it later on when we set up the WordPress installation file. So let's just copy that onto the clipboard. I'm going to say I've copied the password to a safe place. I click on use password and there we go. Now I just need to copy all this information into a notepad file so that I can make a note of it and use it later on. So let's just do that. Let's open up notepad. Let's um, one. Okay, now to save that. And then when that's done, simply click here on create user to create the account. If your web hosting package comes with the extend control panel, then the process is a bit simpler. What you do is come down to where it says web tools, click here on MySQL databases. And with this, what it does is it creates a database which has the same name as the actual username. So the database name and the username are the same, all bar the front part which will be set by the hosting provider. So if I create a username that says Sam001 and enter a password, you have to enter your own one here and then click on create there we go that database is created and you can see I've just scrolled down a bit and it's giving it the prefix web156 username password and this will be the same for both, as I said, the username and password and uh, database name rather will be exactly the same. So I would need to copy and paste that into the um, WordPress configuration file. If your hosting account comes with the Plesk Parallels panel, then the setup procedure is similar to that uh, if you've got cPanel. You click here on Databases and then click add new database opens up this window you type in the database name again let's call this Sam's blog and then click on OK and there we go the database has been created now I need to add a new database user so click here on add new database user and we add the username so let's call that Sam001 again and then you can put in the new password you have to 
write it yourself here and then click on OK and there you are now that's all set up okay now your databases are set up the next stage is to download the WordPress software to your computer's hard drive so come here to this website wordpress.org forward slash download and then click on the button that says download WordPress and it will have the latest version at the time that I'm recording this video it's version 3.2.1 although it may be a later one by the time you come to watch it so just simply click to download it to your hard drive it's quite a large file as you can see there it's three megabytes so it can take a while to download if you're on a slow connection just click there this pop-up window opens and make sure the save file radio button is selected and click on OK and you can see it's downloading now and there we are that's finished so all I need to do now is unzip it onto my computer's hard drive and when it's unzipped it'll look like this it'll yield a directory called WordPress with these subdirectories and all these PHP files okay first thing you have to do to set this up is to rename this file here it says wp-config-sample.php and you want to rename that just wp-config.php you want to drop the sample bit and then you want to open it using a uh, program like notepad or something like that so just double click on that I've got it associated to open up with notepad and you can see this is the PHP code for the file the installation file and you need to make a couple of changes most of the stuff here below here would not need to be changed but you do need to change these settings here the database name username password and so on mostly your database host will be local host so you can leave that unless your server uses a different uh, type of host name and all the rest of the stuff you can leave and this is why you need to save the uh, information as you set up the databases so let's just copy and paste those in we can have the database name there do you right click and copy and then I can just simply paste it in there keep it in between the uh, quotes there and that's one okay next thing to do is to put in these authentication keys and so on now there is a quick way of doing this and this is to generate your own phrases at this link here so if I just copy and then right click copy that and now I just need to I don't close that one now I need to open up uh, Firefox and then I can simply paste this in to the address bar and there we go it's generated all this information for me so I just highlight that and copy it and then I can come back here and just simply paste this in as a block in here like that and there we go that's all done you don't need to change anything else at all so I can now save that do file and save 
and now I need to FTP let me close that and now I need to FTP all this content here up to my web server you can use the file manager in your control panel to do this but it can be a bit tricky as you'll have to create all the folders separately and then upload everything into each separate folder so it's much easier if you use an FTP software package uh, the one that I like to use is FileZilla which you can download for free from this website here FileZilla-project.org and it just makes the whole process that much simpler and this is what FileZilla looks like when it's up and running I'm gonna create a new directory on the server to install WordPress into um, if you're gonna have it as the main focus of your site then you'd want to upload it into the root directory of, of your site so if you're just gonna have WordPress on your site you'd want to upload it into the um, the root directory of the site on this particular server they call it HTTP docs on most other servers they call it public HTML okay so right click and create directory and we'll call this WordPress and then click on OK and what I can then do is simply open it up click on WordPress you can see there's nothing there um, FileZilla is actually a very easy type of FTP software to use once you've logged in you'll find your remote site over here on the right and the local site here on the left and what you do is go to the directory on your hard drive where you want to upload the information and you can then simply highlight all of it click the first one then do shift and click and that selects all of it then right click and click on upload and it will immediately start to upload the files that you've selected into the directory that you've selected on your hosting account okay as you can see there are 933 files to be transferred it's going to take a while to do this so what I'm going to do now is just pause the video and then come back to it when everything has been uploaded and there we go everything's uploaded exactly how long this will take will depend a lot on the speed of your internet connection if you have um, a super fast broadband it'll only take a few minutes on regular broadband it can take about 15 to 20 minutes on a dial-up account it can take a lot longer in fact there is such a lot of data here that your dial-up might time out and you'll have to reload it but the good thing about FileZilla is it will tell you if any transfers have failed so that you can upload them again okay that's all done so what I need to do now is log off the server and log on to the setup for WordPress okay you need to come here to this page the installation page which will be your URL in this particular case it's anothercompany.co.uk if you've got it installed in a subdirectory like I have here which is WordPress you need to come to that and then wp-admin forward slash install.php if you're installing this in the root directory of course you wouldn't have the WordPress directory you just go to your URL forward slash wp-admin forward slash install.php then you need to fill in this information here you want the site title let's call this Sam's blog username the default one is admin and it's best to leave it at that you can always add new ones later you want the password and then put it in again
your email address and then you want to either check or uncheck this box here allow my site to appear in search engines like Google and Technorati good idea to say yes and then simply click on this button here install WordPress and there we go WordPress has been installed so I can click here on the login button enter the username and password and click on login and there we are it's all set up and if I log out again and just go to the main site here there we go there's the blog all installed so there you go that's how you can install WordPress manually if you don't have the luxury of an auto install script. So it's not all that difficult really.